In Day's Roman Colosseum they called it, bread and circuses, use of superficial appeal entertainment by leaders to distract citizens from real problems. Today's term is sports washing the use of games, teams, and stadiums to clear in and launder a reputation. Saudi Arabia, a country that has never won an Olympic gold medal, has suddenly emerged as a major player in global sport hosting events, buying teams and attracting athletes through staggering contracts. Is this investment an attempt to diversify the economy and appeal to young citizens, as their leaders claim? Or is it being done to cover up human rights abuses, authoritarian rule, and even? Argentina may have won the World Cup last December, but it wasn't the only country to emerge as a big winner. Oil-rich Gulf state Qatar, a controversial hosting election, spent more than $200 billion on staging the event and has garnered past criticism of its appalling human rights record. And another winner was on the side. Saudi Arabia has taken to pitch only team to beat Argentina, a victory celebrated in Arab world by Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Saud, country sports minister. Prince Abdulaziz it was incredible. This was a milestone that we marked, showing that if you put in the effort and use the right resources behind it, you could accomplish impossible things. It continued after the unlikely World Cup. Saudi Arabia's enormous resources, that is, the shaken oil money, have convinced a generation star, Portuguese Cristiano Ronaldo, to play for a team in Riyadh. His salary? More than $200 million a season. That's right, $200 million roughly the total annual salaries of LeBron James, Steph Curry, Aaron Judge, and Patrick Mahomes. The opening bell of Saudi Arabia's investment in global sports rang three years ago with The Clash on the Dunes, a heavyweight championship fight. A few months later, Kingdom held the richest horse race in world. He has a 10-year deal with Formula One Racing and WWE. Saudi Arabia's Minister of Sports, Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Saud 60 Minutes John Wertheim You've heard the term sports washing, this is the idea that countries can cover up bad actions through sports. Do you believe in the concept that a country can use sports in this way? I do not agree with this term. Because I think if you go to different parts of the world, you bring people together. Everyone should come and see Saudi Arabia, see what happens and make their decision after that. See for yourself. If you don't like it, okay. That's exactly why we came to Saudi Arabia late last year, to see this unusual sports center for ourselves. Although December was a closed season for professional tennis, Riyadh was the site of an exhibition decorated top 10 stars and decorated with local touches, Hawks were drafted to help the draw ceremony. But the real relationship? Australian Nick Kyrgios was very honest. Reporter what brought you here at last? Nick Kyrgios money is pretty good, I won't lie. Despite a lot of empty seats and few obstacles to television rights, which are often lifeblood of the sport, players were paid millions just to get into game. And Taylor Fritz, a Californian, won a $1 million prize for winning the weekend event. The Saudis do not just host events. Through the Kingdom's Sovereign Wealth Fund, they acquired Newcastle United, an English Premier League football team. Leaving their usual striped jerseys for the Saudi flags green, we saw them for the match they were playing against a local team. And then there's Saudi Arabia's biggest sporting move to date the $2.5 billion LIV Tour, which splits golf. Tiger Woods, who rejected this rival with an endless pit money quote on the PGA Tour, turned down $800 million from the Saudis to join LIV. Several other top players, including Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson, have changed their genre loyalties, both of which have been paid over $100 million. LIV Golf Course 60 Minutes John Wertheim The flow of Saudi money into sports is definitely an obstacle. Is that the intention? Sports bring a lot. John Wertheim but you have to understand the impact it has. I mean, if winners of the LIV golf events are earning many times more than Tiger Woods did when he won most recent Masters, that's a big economic change. Prince Abdulaziz I don't think it matters to increase participation in sports and to increase interest in sports, so why not? 
The sports minister insists massive investment is a key pillar of what has been called Vision 2030, a $7 trillion plan by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the kingdom's influential ruler, or MBS to diversify economy beyond oil and soften some of its most restrictive social conventions and laws. Women are now allowed to drive, open their heads, have passports and travel without a male guardian. In the country's fields, gyms and recreation centers, young Saudis, men and women, embrace sport. Their mothers as well. Rasha al Khamis is the nation's first certified female boxing coach. In 2019, he participated in the Clash on the Dunes fight. Rasha al Khamis is Saudi Arabia's first certified female boxing coach for 60 Minutes John Wertheim This Is Your Country. These are two international superstars and you don't watch them on TV. You're watching them live, right here. How was that? Rasha al Khamis I never imagined that I would go to a fight in my own country, drive my car and join a fight. And you can feel that the change is tangible. But these changes have a price. Lujain al Hathlaul led the Saudi women's car movement and punished for his activism he was arrested, charged with terrorism and sentenced to prison, which he said he tortured. Even after his release, he is prevented from leaving the country. Her sister Lena lives in exile and has spoken to us from afar. Lena al Hathlaul When we talk about sports, of course we want to have fun in Saudi Arabia. We want to have this not at the cost of our freedoms. We don't want to live in fear and not know if they will walk into our house tomorrow and take our sister or daughter. John Wertheim even if they organize fancy sporting events? Lena al Hathlaul, I want them both. The harsh treatment of his sister, he says, underscores a stark paradox at a time when social freedoms are expanding, political repression in Saudi Arabia has become more severe. Lena Al Hathlal, 60 Minutes John Wertheim You say it's a window dressing. And mass executions and repression behind the games than ever before. Lena Al Hathlal, absolutely. That is for certain. Cultural change goes beyond sport. Who would convince Saudi Arabia to host an annual desert party? Bruno Mars and DJ Khaled were among the leading actors. It's all one thing sports, entertainment, tourism. To marry them all, he turned to the crown prince, the American impresario Jerry Inzerillo. John Wertheim What does a man in Brooklyn do in a place like this? Jerry Inzerillo creating magic and the kingdom.